All right, Shalom. First off and foremost, as always, I want to say, Kohalayim La Yahawa, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakakwadash. Double honor being to the elder apostles, a great millstone that do rule and teach well. And a sincere Shalom to Anki out there that's pushing his truth through the spirit, through the power, and through the name of Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahawakakwadash. Okay, so this is going to be a quick lesson, and it's going to be titled A Reminder. The kingdom is coming. Okay. This is a reminder, you know, exhortation, you know, just to, uh, you know, don't forget that the kingdom is coming, you know, because, you know, hey, we're in the last captivity, you know, and, and of course, you know, being a servant to Esau, you know, being a slave here, it sucks. Right. But, you know, we must accept it. Right. And, um, you know, that description actually uh, says that actually, which. <clears throat> I'll grab that real quick okay, because uh, we have to realize that we've been put here for a reason. You know, we, we disobeyed, you know, our Heavenly Father, you know, Yahweh about Shema Shai. So that's why we're, you know, we're in this predicament. But, you know, ultimately, you know, you know, uh, just like how a father will put his child on punishment, it's not going to be not going to be punished, for, you know, forever. Right. Just for a temporal uh, moment. Right. So let's grab this quick precept. I believe it's in the book of Leviticus. Okay, <clears throat> or as well, I can find it. All right, um, let's see here. Okay, uh, accept captivity. All right, this is the book of Leviticus, chapter 26 and verse 41. All right, and actually, let me start at verse 40. It says, if they shall confess their iniquity and the iniquity of their fathers with their trespass, which they trespass against me, and that also they have walked contrary unto me, and, and that I also have walked contrary unto them and have brought them into, uh, into the land of their enemies, if then their uncircumcised hearts be humbled, and they then accept the punishment of their iniquity, right? You know, and, you know, because we commit iniquity towards, you know, the how about Shemal Shai, that's why we're in this position, right? That's why we're in this, this, uh, this temporal, you know, uh, uh, captivity, right? So us being in this position, we have to accept it. We have to, um, we got, we got to take it, to, you got to take it to the chin, okay? Because even when we go to the book of Jeremiah, um, the Lord, uh, told Jeremiah to tell you know Israel, told Jake, you know to you know to uh to build houses, you know to uh, you know to uh basically to to get to get comfortable because hey you're gonna be here for a minute, right? So fast forward, that's just like today, you know us here and being in the modern day Babylon, you know we gotta get, hey we gotta be here till the Lord says so, right? But this is but like I said, this is a reminder, all right that that the kingdom is coming, okay? So. Even though it, it sucks, even though it, you know, the, uh, the devil is over us, all right? Just know that we have a kingdom coming, okay? Because we're not going to be here for long, all right? And to prove that, let's get this. This is the book of Job, chapter 20, and verse uh, 4. It says, Know this, uh, knowest thou not this of old? It says, Man was placed upon earth, that the triumphing of the wicked is short, and the joy of the hypocrite both for a moment, right? So... So if the if the uh the triumphing, you know, if the um prosper the prosperity of the wicked is for a moment, then that makes what? This make that makes our captivity both for a moment, right? Because you know, uh Esau Edom, you know, his rulership is no different, okay, than than, in, than any other heathen. Okay. You know, the uh the uh the, the um the Persians rule, the you know, the uh the Babylonians, okay, the Greeks, the Romans. You know, which those were Edomites as well. You know, oh, the you can't you can't forget about ancient Egypt, right? So the the Lord, you know, the Lord, you know, took them down, right? The Lord, you know, had you know had their rulership, you know, come to a an, uh, a halt. So how much more, you know, this this rulership, you know, we're dealing with Esau, okay? Because the scriptures say uh, Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the, is the beginning of it that followeth, right? Let's stand that real quick. Second Edge 6 and verse 7. It says, Then answered I and said, What shall be the parting asunder of the times? 
or when shall be the end of the first and the beginning of it that followeth? And he said unto me, From Abraham unto Isaac, when Jacob and Esau were born of him, Jacob's hand held first the hill of Esau. Okay, and if you're new tuning in, you can read this account in the book of Genesis, the, the 25th chapter, going in about the birth of our forefather Jacob and our, our uh, evil twin brother, okay, the forefather of the Edomites of, you know, Esau, right? And it says, and us oh, in Salaki and dealing with that, you know, this is uh, symbolic of of us, you know, spiritually pulling down, you know, Esau's, you know, kingdom through Yahweh Bashim Shai. Okay, because through Yahweh Bashim Shai, we cast down strongholds, right? Verse 9, it says, here's the point. For Esau is the end of the world. All right? And like I said, if you're new tuning in, okay, uh, Esau, if we don't know, is a so-called white man. A so-called white race, right? You know, the uh, you know the ones who the ones who you see on the dollar bill, the ones who you see everywhere in the billboards. Okay, you know, uh, even the ones the ones you don't see, the elites, you know, the ones that you know the uh, that rule this this temporal evil as world right now. Okay, they're the Edomites according to the scriptures. They're you know they're the Bible, they're the devil that the Bible speaks of, right? So right now, you know, we're just living in the moment of the time, and we're waiting to uh to um see the downfall of Esau Edom. Okay, it says for Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob. Okay, who was Jacob? The twelve tribes, right? From Judah all the way down to Ishkar. Okay, Judah, uh, Judah, Benjamin, Levi. That's the, the uh, southern tribe. Then you have the northern tribe, which is Ephraim. You know, Simeon, uh, Manasseh, Gad, Reuben, so on and so forth. Naphtali, right? But in the kingdom, we're gonna be you know uh one you know one nation again. But right now, we're not a nation. You know, you know we're all scattered. We're in captivity. Okay, but soon we you know we're gonna be back together again. For eternity, right? And it says, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. Okay? So, 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 uh, you know, after Esau goes down, that's going to be, you know, the, the beginning of us. You know, the beginning of a new rulership. Okay? A righteous rulership. Okay? Because Yahushai, okay, he, 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 listen, man, Yahushai is going to come back to bring righteousness back in this earth. Okay? Because right now, being that the wicked is ruling... The, the world is in turmoil. The world is in chaos. You know, it's uh, it's mourning. The people are mourning, right? This is uh, Second Peter three and verse thirteen. It says, "Nevertheless, we we, according to His promise, right, the Lord's promise, right, look for new heavens and a new earth." Okay, and, you know, and and hence this uh, the uh, title of this lesson is titled uh, um, "A Reminder: The Kingdom Is Coming," right. And that's what we hate. That's what we look for. You know, we uh we hope that there's going to be, you know, uh, you know, in which it will be. But that's our hope. That's our faith. Right. It's going to be a world of righteousness. Right. It says, look for new heavens and a new earth. Right. A new rulership. OK, because right now, you know, we're in hell. You know, we're in uh, Esau's heaven. You know, he's a he's a uh, what's the what's the uh, word? He's a um a uh, unfit ruler. Unprofitable ruler. That's why everything is all in, in disarray right now. That's why the Lord is going to take him out very, very soon. And it says, "We're in dwell of righteousness," and that's what we and that's what we want. That's what we need, man. Okay, because for so long this place has been, you know, uh, ran with you know uh, uh, with demonic activity. Okay, very uh, satanic vibrations that's being pushed out on this earth. Okay, because of Esau Edom. All right. But he has to go. Okay, he got to be put down like the sick puppy he is. Okay. This is the book of, <clears throat> excuse me. What's that? Uh, Sirach 25 and verse 9. Excuse me. Uh, where is it at? Uh, I think it's, yep. 20, 20, uh, Sirach 25 and verse 7. Excuse me. It says there be nine things which I have judged my heart to be to be happy, and the tenth I will utter with my tongue. A man that have joy of his children, and he that liveth to see the fall of his enemy. Okay, and that's gonna be very joyous, you know, for us to see the you know the complete fall of our enemy. Because right now, you know, uh, things are still functioning, things are still going, 
but Babylon is 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 chipping away. Babylon Babylon is slowly but surely, you know, fading away, man. You know the uh, the mirth is gone. Okay, the uh the the uh the uh, financial aspect of Babylon, the economy is is not like it once was. All right, you have the you have these nations, you know, such as you know um Iran, North Korea, uh, East India, okay, so uh so on and so forth. You know, they're not you know messing with Babylon anymore. OK, because it's prophecy that uh, these nations are going to turn, you know, on Babylon. OK, and destroy it. OK, through your three. How about Shemal Shai? And then that's prophecy. OK, so this place is uh, is on, a, is on a, 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 a countdown. OK, just like how they just like how you see in the movies. You have the uh, the uh, what is it called the uh, the sand clock, I believe. But but, you know, time is ticking for Babylon, just like that sand. OK, going down that. Uh, uh, every grain that that's dropping is Babylon's uh, getting closer to destruction, right? This is the book of Lamentations. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let's book of Lamentations, four and verse twenty, twenty one. And it says, "Rejoice and be glad, O daughter of Edom, that dwellest in the land of Uz." Right, right. So you know you have a lot of Edomites that walk around. You know, they walk around with a lot of pride, especially the ones at ground level. You know, you can't tell them shit because, you know, they, you know, they've been living it up for a very long time. But guess what? They, they're they feeling that heat. They're feeling that fire. OK, and soon and soon they're going to feel that nuclear fire. But before that, that nuclear fire comes. OK, you know, Jacob Trouble is going to happen. You know, uh, civil unrest. OK, uh, complete, you know, uh, shit, shit, shit hitting the fan. Okay, within Babylon, and 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 guess what? It it deserves it, because these people, you know, they walk up, they they walk around like their shit don't stink, but soon, you know, a lot of people out here they're gonna get exposed. Okay, the Lord is gonna pull their card very very soon. So rejoice, you know, Esau, rejoice and be glad, you know, do what you must do, you know, on your, on you know the things that you want to do off your bucket list, whatever you got going on, you know, going your vacations, you know, whatever you gotta do. OK, because your time is about to be up. OK, just like we read earlier in Job 20 in verse um, uh, verse uh, five. Right. It says uh, the cup also shall pass through unto thee. Right. You're going to get that that judgment. OK, you're going to get that judgment that you deserve. Right. The Lord is going to put you in slavery under the Israelites. OK, you're going to get, you know, uh, the scriptures say do unto her double as she have, as she have done unto you. All right. You will not escape. You know, the judgment that's in store for you, Esau. OK, starting off with, you know, the the elites, the wicked elites. All right. And it says, thou shalt be drunken and shall make thyself naked. The punishment of thy iniquity is accomplished, O daughter of Zion. He will no more carry thee away into captivity. Right. So that's why this lesson is titled, titled a reminder. The kingdom is coming because it's the last captivity. And I was telling the brother earlier, I said, man, I'm glad it's the last captivity because, man, sometimes you get fed up, you know, being here in Babylon. Right. But that's why I brought up early through the spirit on how we must have set this captivity at the moment because we went off. Right. But that's why. Uh, but but that's why the, the scriptures say, um, let me just grab it real quick. I'm going to hold this real quick and get Baruch. This is why the scriptures say this. Um, Baruch. Chapter two. Actually, uh, let me just look it up. ten times more. Yep. Excuse me. Baruch four, Baruch four and verse twenty eight, and it says, for, "For as it was your mind to go astray from the Most High, so being returned, right? Because you know, before the truth, you know, we were Gentiles in the mind. You know, we didn't know who we were as a people. We didn't know who our 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 God was. You know, I didn't know, but of course, you had that zeal." But not knowledge, right? And it says, so being returned, right? We can't, you know, you know, being woken up, you know, coming back to the truth, you know, being, uh, being, um, uh, no more being lost sheep anymore, you know, you know, being, uh, you know, hearing the word, you know, that, that you know, the, uh, the Lord, you know, uh, excuse me, I say, I say it like this, hearing the doctrine, which is the Lord's doctrine, that the Lord, you know, uh, sp spoke through the apostles, still speaking through the apostles. For us to hear the, the apostles, the elders, the great millstone, the bishops, right? So that's how we're being returned. 
by hearing his word. So bring return, seek him ten times more. And who is the him? The him is Yahweh by Shemal Shai. He's our God, right? That's our Savior, right? That's our Heavenly Father, right? So we have to seek the Lord ten times more, right? You know, because we're in captivity. You know, we know we don't, we, listen, we don't, we don't have nothing else but Yahweh by Shemal Shai. And of course, you know, the, you know, brothers too. But first, Yahweh by Shemal Shai, because he, he's going to, you know, save us out of this, this, uh, this hell hold, you know, this destruction, right? So being that we're in captivity, you know, it's our duty to, uh, to, to constantly praise the Lord, you know, and to serve him with all our, you know, mind, body, and soul, right? That's mandatory, because that's the whole duty of man, to serve Yahweh by Shemal Shai. So let's head back to Lamentations 4 and verse 21. And it says, or excuse me, 22. It says, the punishment of thy iniquity O, is accomplished, O daughter of Zion. He will no more carry thee away into captivity. Right, man? Call Lord Yahweh about Shema Shai. Okay? He will visit thine iniquity, O daughter of Edom. He will discover thy sin. So Esau, you, listen, you are not going to get, uh, you know, uh, acquitted for the iniquities that you have done unto the children of Israel, unto the earth, unto these other nations. You know, because Esau, he, 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 he done ran the mug everywhere. Okay. He's running the mug everywhere, man. He's the red horse, right? He, he took peace. He took harmony, peace from the earth. How do you do that? Only a devil does that, right? <clears throat> now, let's, let's go for limitations. And we can go from, from there to, oh, man, I just lost my uh, train of thought. Um. What was I going to get? Limitations. Oh, Matthew 24. Excuse me. Matthew 24. And I get to the point in verse 3. And it says, And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him, the disciples came unto him privately saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of of the world okay now we go into this particular word world right here in, in this verse matthew 24 and verse 3 and go it goes into the word eon or in uh an age okay and right now we're living in the age of esau okay we're living in this uh this era of the edomites so they saw so the disciples at the time before they became apostles they actually have a shot you know when is it going to be the end of esau's world okay and actually, let me just keep, let me just keep going. We read down. Yahweh Shai answered, verse four. And Yahweh Shai answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Hamashiach, I am anointed, and shall deceive many. And you see that, you know, you see that with these 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 false Christian pastors out here. Even you see that with with uh, wicked uh, Israelite leaders within the community of Israel. Okay. And you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars, right? It's like every day there's an article pertaining to World War Three. You know, it's, it's like every day you have, you know, um, what, what they call them, uh, truthers going in about war, you know. So every day there's, uh, you know, um, wars and rumors of wars. And, and that word rumor, it means uh, um, hearsay, you know, basically a rumor, basically things that may come com come about, but. It has no uh, solid proof to back it up, but that. But guess what? That's a rumor. That's what Yahweh Shai said, right? And it says, <clears throat> but guess what? You know, um, being that he said that, you know, it's still that that notion in the air of World War Three because that's ultimately prophecy is going to happen. And it says, "See that ye be not troubled, for all for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet." Right? All these things must got to come to pass for us to get to the kingdom. OK, for, for us to, you know, to have eternal rulership, you know, for us to, you know, uh, ultimately, you know, have true rest and, you know, to have joy in our children and, you know, complete power over the whole over the whole earth, over the, you know, all nations, you know, uh, war and turmoil must happen. Right. Before you get to the uh, sweet, you got to get to the bitter. OK. Verse seven. For nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. Right? You write Russia versus 
<clears throat> excuse me. Like uh, for example, we got we got kingdoms like uh, Russia, okay, uh, uh, North Korea, I Iran, East India, all right, uh, Israel, all right, uh, Babylon's a, a a great kingdom, okay, and they're gonna collide soon. It says, and there and there shall be famines, and pestilences, and there's many pestilences, okay, every day, every night, there's there's it's like a nonstop uh, evolving door. Of articles coming about dealing with pestilences and earthquakes and direst places, right? Meaning in many places. And it says, all these are the beginning of sorrows. So before, you know, we get to that suite, we got to go through, you know, through the things that Shai, uh, uh, uh said. You know, you know, we, we're going to see these things. You know, they're, they're happening right now, but they're going to they're going to increase. Right. So those are the beginning of sorrows, you know, the beginning of 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 destruction, woes, mornings, death. OK, but but this is a reminder that the kingdom is coming. So don't fret. OK, how should I say he said he said, uh, but the end is not yet. Right. So we have to uh, have to continue to, uh, to stay the course. OK. And speaking of staying the course, let's grab that real quick. This first Corinthians 15 and verse 58. And it says, therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Right, man. Always constantly doing the work of Yahweh by Shema Shai, whether if you're studying and reading just to show yourself approved. Right. Whether you do or doing a lesson, being charitable, you know, towards one another, you know. That's all part of doing the work, you know, you know, uh, you know, when it comes to your lot, that's all part of doing the work. OK, and it says, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord, Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai. Right. So the things that we do in the spirit, OK, is is going right back up to the heavens. It's being it's being recorded. OK, so the labor that we do towards, you know, uh, um, in the name of Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai, OK, means something. OK, because here in Babylon, you can work for a company for, you know, 10 plus years and then you can get fired. And then, boom, all that work you did is, is in vain. OK, it means nothing here. OK, but that's why the scriptures say that this place is temporal. All right. Let's snag that real quick. This is 2 Corinthians 4 and I'll start at 16, but the point is 18. It says, for which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day, right? This flesh is weak, feeble, right? So the outward man, you know, this, this, this vile flesh, the weak flesh is, it breaks down at times. You know, brothers have ailments, you know, asthma, you know, it's whatever case may be, you brothers know, right? It says, yet... The inward man is renewed day by day, right? The uh, spirit, the spirit is getting stronger. You know, your faith, in, your faith in, in how about small shy is getting stronger. You, you're you're uh, you, you're getting uh, um, uh, closer spirit in, to how about small shy the spirit, right? For our light affliction, right? This is a light affliction, right? Like I said, it's gonna suck. You know, this affliction is, you know, this captivity is 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 a hey, it, it sucks. You know, being a slave under the heathen is not going to feel good because you being, a, you know, awakened to the truth. You know that you're supposed to be on top, but you got to realize why we're at the bottom right now. OK, that's spiritual maturity to know why we're in, it, why we're in it, why we're in this predicament. OK, so don't fret. This is only a light affliction. It says for a light affliction, which is but for a moment. Right, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Right, and and when I think about that, I think about you know like the gym and working out because, like for example, when you're working out abs, you know you're you're basically afflicting you know your flesh, your body, you know it, you know it's, it's it's painful, it burns, you know, but but it's a moment, right? It's not gonna burn forever, right? So, right, so that's a light affliction. But right here it says, working for us a far more exceeding. An eternal weight of glory. So when you're working out with them abs, you know, uh, you know, ultimately the end result is going to be what you're going to see, 
you know, you're going to have, you know, a, um, a nice physique, right? That's the goal of working abs or any part of your body, right? So how much more, you know, spiritually, how much more when the Lord, you know, gives us the kingdom? Because the because ultimately the kingdom is going to come regardless. Prophecy is going to happen regardless. So all we got to do is continue to endure with all faith, sincerity, and humility and charity, right? Enduring to the end. And guess what, man? The Lord, listen, man, the Lord got us. We got nothing to worry about. And it says, working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we, while we, while we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. Right, man? We don't, we're not focused on these people out here. You know, earlier, brother was telling me, he was like, man, he said, man, I, he said, um, I want to uh, look past these people. You know, and that that that's a, a good spirit to be in. Because these people, you know, they're born in vain. They don't mean nothing. They're they're just extras in the fucking movie. Okay? The Lord made us, you know, us, you know, a special. You know, just like just like how Yahweh Shai is special. The Lord made us special as well. Right? Yahweh Shai said, you know, the works that I do, you're gonna do greater. Okay, talk about the elect, right? So we don't put our focus on temporal things, you know, we put our all in our, you know, our might into things that we can't see. And that's what, you know, the kingdom, deliverance, being crowned by Yahweh Shai. All right. That's that hope. OK, it says, but but at the things which are not seen for the things which are seen are temporal. Right, man. OK, Babylon is fucking temporal. OK, every day we see Babylon every day, uh, every day we see you know, uh, uh, um, bullshit ass people every day. We see, you know, Edomites. Okay. Esau's temporal. Okay. He's temporal because, you know, in the kingdom, you know, after a thousand years, he, he's going to be done away with. You can read that in the book of, of Obadiah, the 18th chapter, the 18th verse, excuse me. Okay. The whole nation of Edom. All right. No more wickedness, man. No more evilness. No more, you know, satanic, Rituals, no more uh, evil, nothing, man. Okay, it's, it's time for righteousness, to, you know, to uh, to flourish. And it says, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Okay, and what does the word eternal mean? Let's let's get that real quick. Let's uh define eternal. Now this is on Google. Okay, and it says. Lasting or existing forever without end or beginning. Right, man. Forever. Okay. And that reminds me of the scripture in the book of Daniel. Okay. Shall we snag that real quick? This is Daniel 7 and verse um, 18. And it says, but the saints of the most high, right? The Israelites. Okay. Starting off with the elect. Starting off with the shy and the elect, man. But the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom, okay, and possess it, excuse me, and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. And when I read this particular precept, I think of that, that good ass movie, Brightburn, man, because when he, when he was sleeping, he was getting a message from on high, okay, and in, in, uh, in his sleep, he kept saying, uh, take, take, take. And then when he finally got in his, his, his final form, he woke him and said, take the world. Okay, and that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take the world, right? Just like how in the time the time of Joshua, you know, he uh, us, you know, the Israelites, you know, in Joshua, we took down, you know, uh, the, those heathen kings, you know, and the, those those armies, just going down each land, you know, and just doing them. Oh man, we was, we did a number, you know, through those nations, you know, uh, through uh, through how about Shemal Shai? So how much more when when it's uh, uh for you know eternity, man? OK, so we so we have eternity to look forward to. OK, this is not the last stop for human civilization. Babylon is not the last stop for 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 uh, for society, man. This place is uh, uh, prophesied to be overthrown, according to the scriptures. Let's snag that real quick, man. This is the book of Revelation, chapter 18. And I'll start at verse 20. It says, Rejoice over her, thou heaven, and ye holy apostles and prophets, right? The servants of the Lord, right? 
for the Most High had to avenge you on her, right? And why would the and why would the Most High avenge his men? Because this place is wicked, okay? Because you have the uh, the prophets, you know, you have the servants of the Most High, you know, the teachers, you know, the evangelists, right? You know, the the men of Yahweh Bashmal Shai here in this wicked ass society signing crime, man, about all the abominations that be done in the midst of, right? Just like how you know Lot was vexed, it said, it said, it said. Uh, let's get it real quick. We can go to Second Peter, chapter two, and verse uh, seven. You get to the point, and it says, "And delivered just Lot, meaning a righteous Lot, vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked." So he was, you know, he was uh, irritated. I should say, with you know the uh, with the uh, the sickly manner of life how people lived in in that time you know just like today man this listen there's no new thing under the sun you know babylon is also you know spiritually sodom just like how it says in revelation 11 and verse 8 this place is spiritually sodom and gomorrah but guess what it's gonna go all bad just just like sodom and gomorrah okay this place is sodom and gomorrah 2.0 but the point is that you know a lot you know just lot was, was he, he was vexed too okay so, so the Lord is going to avenge, you know, his uh, his men, his servants, you know, he's going to he's going to avenge his men. He's going to, uh, you know, do a great number on this wicked ass kingdom. Right. And it says for the most high I had to avenge you on her. Now, real quick, let's look at that word avenge. Now, the word avenge, it says, inflict harm and in return for an injury or wrong done to oneself or another. Right. And we've been done wrong here in Babylon. OK, we've been done wrong here in Babylon, man. All right. You know, Esau has touched the apple of the Lord's eye. Right. So and, and, and that means that when some, something or, or, or someone is, is near and dear unto you. OK. And us being, you know, the Lord's chosen people. We are near and dear to him. So the Lord is going to avenge, avenge his uh his uh his prophets and his holy apostles, right? Verse 21. And a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and cast it into the sea, saying, Thus for violence shall that great city Babylon. Okay, because because this is a great country. This is a great city, man. This 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 uh great city has been you know up and running. For decades, man, for a long time, Esau done had his glory, man. But just like we brought out in the, in the beginning of this lesson, Job 20, the triumph of the wicked is short and both for a moment, right? And it says, thus for violence shall that great city Babylon be thrown down, right? And going back to the word, uh, avenge, it says to inflict harm, okay? And that harm is going to be through what? Through thermonuclear missiles, Okay. But the scriptures, you know, like, for example, like Second Edge of the 16th chapter, the missiles are referred to as arrows. Right. So this place is going to get, you know, sh shot up with a lot of fiery arrows. OK. And it says shall be uh, thus with violence shall that great city of Babylon be thrown it down and shall be found no more at all. And like the old saying goes, the, the bigger they are, the harder they fall. OK, but guess what? This place is not going to uh, rise or get up ever again. Babylon, uh, Esau is not going to, you know, make a comeback season and rise, uh, rise from the ashes like the Phoenix. You know, no, that's not happening because this is the last go around for uh, Esau's rulership. Just like it's the last go around for us, the children of Israel being in captivity. Right. So, like I said, through the spirit, this lesson is titled a reminder. The kingdom is coming. So with that being said, I just want to say call Lame La Yahweh Baha Shem, Yahweh Shai, Baha Shem Kakwadash, double honor, being to the elder apostles of Great Millstone that do rule and teach well. And I shall to you Ankim out there that that's supposed to be the truth, through the spirit, through the power, and through the name of Yahweh Baha Shem, Yahweh Shai, Baha Rakakwadash, and Lord as well, the Lord's sheep was fed and edified. Okay, remember the kingdom is coming. Okay, don't fret. You know, hey, I I, I know it sucks. But hey, we must keep going for, you know, uh, the sake, excuse me, for Yahweh Shai's sake, right? 
for his namesake. We must keep pushing and enduring. All right. Shalom.